Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to talk about the TS-100 Type 1. This is from 1972. It's very similar to the TS-100 that was produced a couple of years earlier. Uh, the first one apparently had a spherical mirror. This one, I'm not sure. It doesn't say it's parabolic, but it might be a parabolic mirror. It doesn't make too much difference because a four inch at F10, this is F10, uh, really doesn't need to be a perfect parabola to be a good telescope. It can be spherical and be a, a very fine telescope. Let's take a look at some of the features of this telescope. First of all, the mount is um, bigger. This is a, a larger mount. This is a type one mount. Uh, let me explain that to you in a bit more detail. Here I have three very similar Takahashi mounts set up next to each other. This first one is the TS-65D original version. And I think you can see, if you look carefully, you can see that there's a difference here. The right ascension drive is a bigger gear. There's also internal differences. Now to add to the confusion, here's something that looks almost identical in pictures. This is the Type 1 mount. The Type 1 mount has a large right ascension drive gear, um, probably has shorter gear, or shorter bearings in here, I'm guessing. Uh, less substantial bearings inside there. So it's a little bit less mount than the D-type, especially the improved D-type. Very confusing, isn't it? The TS-100 came on this mount, which is the Type 1 mount, but the earlier version came on this mount. This is the Type S mount. Much less substantial, a lighter weight mount. It's adequate, but just barely. This one is more than sufficient. So the Type 1 mount is uh, very nice and star sturdy. This is how it works. It's a lot like the D mount. As a matter of fact, in photographs, you could easily be confused and think it's a D mount, especially a, uh, the second iteration, the second type of D mount. There's where the lock is. Your slow motion control here doesn't need to be very long because you're standing right here at the eyepiece. You're going to lock it down. You've got immediate control of both the hand controls. Really easy, really easy. And as a matter of fact, one of the things they talked about this scope was that it's an extruded tube. The extruded tube means it's very smooth, doesn't have any seams and therefore it rotates more easily. So if you loosen this up, you can rotate this around, which you're going to want to do it on some occasions. You're going to want to rotate the tube a little bit to get it into a better position for viewing, something like that maybe. So you want to go from there to, oh, let's lock this thing over here. Now you can see that that's going to be a problem unless you can unlock the tube, loosen the tube, rotate it. This is a nice big, nice big clamshell here, and it's got really good control, so it's easy to do this. So now you have it in a more convenient location. You can rotate the tube. It's very important for a Newtonian to be able to do that. It gets completely impossible if you don't. These three pieces, along with a nut, comprise a clamp-on camera mount, piggyback, for, piggyback photography. A little clumsy and awkward to get it on there, but with the right nut you can do it. Here's what it looks like with the device mounted. You can, uh, of course, arrange the camera to point in any direction. You can even change this as long as you have the proper uh, Takahashi wrench, change the angle. So it's uh, pretty flexible. 
This scope features a really nice 6x30 finder. Uh, Takahashi 6x30 finder is a wonderful finder. Very nice. Got a nice lid for it. One of the things they bragged about is this. It's got a single vein spider here. And there is some interesting construction behind that. Let me show you a close-up. Let me show you what's going on with this focuser on this TS-100. I discovered this one and I took it off to adjust it. That uh, this, this focuser was loose, so I had to fix that. Anyway, let's take this little cover off here. That's just a cover, just to cover up this thing. Now, what's going on with this thing? Well, let's look down the throat. There is the secondary stock, probably the most robust secondary stock I've ever seen. And it's, uh, oh, it's just superb. It's Taka Takahashi, so it's great. Now, it's on a rotating pivot. Now, when I loosen this up, just loosen it a little bit. Now, I think you can see the whole secondary stock rotates like so. There is no earthly reason for it to do that. Actually, there is one earthly reason to do that. Let me show you. This thing rotates to get the stock out of the way when you're pulling the screws on the focuser. That's the only reason I could think that Takahashi would do that. So I've got it up, up now, and I can work on these two bottom screws here. Now, normally, my fingers would be in there very close to the secondary. Be a fairly good chance that I'd touch the secondary. Okay, so now I've got those two out. Now, let's put this down. So it's out of the way. Get it good position so I don't bang it into anything. Now when I pull this out, that's the whole thing. Now you can see the whole shoot match. I'm going to put it back in. Process will be just the reverse. Very, very easy. The optics on this scope are superb. It delivers an image very much like a perfect apochromat 90 millimeters or so. Beautiful. Makes a nice image. NF10 reflector with a small central obstruction makes very nearly an apochromat in terms of performance. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the TS-100 Type 1 from 1972. Thank you for watching.